Hi everyone, this is Terry. In an earlier video, I showed how to create some designs using shapes for Valentine's. And one of the things that I showed is how to create something that is chenille-like. In other words, the stitches that you see in this shape are going to stitch down three layers of fabric. And I'll use a chenille cutter to cut in between these rows of fabric not cutting the background. I want to show you how I created the chenille-like stitch in our software and then also show you why I like it because I can apply it to different shapes. So the first thing I'll do is choose File New and we'll first go over to the Programmable Stitch Creator. Now when you go into the programmable stitch creator, you can create a new fill, stamp pattern, a motif, or a decorative fill. And in this case, I want a decorative fill. All I need to do is choose draw line, and I draw from point to point, and double click, and I'm creating those lines. These lines are approximately one inch apart, and what I'm doing is creating a, a simple line down through the center of this pattern. And the reason for that is that I want to be able to use this for my channels for chenille. So you see in the preview box, and if, you, in, if your preview box is not open, you can go to view and turn the preview on and off. You can also turn the guidelines on and off, but I needed them to draw my lines. So now you can see this is simply a, a straight stitch. And what I'll do is I'll go to home and do file, save as, and I want to save it as a decorative fill pattern, and I'll name it. Now I have created a couple. You'll see those right here. They have the PLF extension. And you can also create other types of, of fills, but this is the one that I created. I'll choose cancel here because I've already created this and saved it. So the, the advantage to creating this is if I, I can take any shape. So let's just say I take this little bear and I draw that on the screen. And then I go into the fill stitch, choose the decorative fill stitch, and I'll choose my decorative fill folder. And here's the chenille stitch that I created. Now you'll notice right now this is in millimeters, and I, my tool cuts basically a half inch channel. So I'll change this to 50 millimeters, which is essentially a half inch. If we change it to inches, you can see that this will say that it's 1.97 inches, and that's really not necessarily what this distance is, just, just to make sure. So what you'll need to do if you try this, you, you need to measure, and you can see this is 0 0.50. That's the reason I chose millimeters, because I knew 50 millimeters was correct. What I'll do now is go back and select it. And because I created this for a shape, I can go in and change the direction of it, which makes it so nice because if I wanted the direction to be in, in another direction, I can do that. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in my Valentine video was that Unlike the chenille stitch that exists in another software program that I've seen, this is less than perfect. And the reason I'm saying that is that it stitches down the ends of the channels that I'll need. And I'll have to relieve that by using my seam ripper. Whereas uh, um, normally what you see whenever something is digitized for chenille, and let me just clear this out a little bit. What I'll do is I'll make this a no-sew. And what you would do if this was true chenille, you would, first of all, let's get a grid. And we'll show the background grid. I have half-inch increments here. You would have to digitize this. So you would do that by clicking off. And you would first go into shapes, you'll choose your line. And 
I'll make this easy for myself and choose straight lines. So I would go from the beginning to the end, double click, and, and I would create these lines. Now these are not going to be zigzags, but I'll change that in a moment. And I probably should have stitched these out first, so we'll need to reorder. So we'll just do that. But I want to show you how much time I'll save by doing what I'm doing. So let me first of all move those first two in the correct order. And we'll move them up above the, this first one. Okay, and we'll go ahead and, and, and select all of these so that we can change them to a running stitch because that's what they need to be instead of a zigzag stitch. So we'll choose a running stitch and we'll change that color and make it red so you can see it. And then I'll go on and continue. I would continue drawing those lines. And then what I would do is I would move them to the beginning of the sewing order. The reason for that is they need to stitch down first. But, but what you understand is I cannot change the angle of that by going to sewing attributes for, for these particular stitches like I could uh, on the stitches that I use for a decorative fill. And every time I change shapes, I have to digitize my, my stitches, which is really not what I want to do. It's the, it's a slower way of accomplishing my goal. So instead, what I did is I used that decorative fill. Let me delete those. And I'll go on and select this again. And I'll choose my decorative fill, which is going to be my channels. And one of the things that I need to do is I need something as a placement line. Now I have a, a luminaire and I can project and see where I need to place my three layers of fabric. So what you would have is a background layer of fabric and the background, let's just pretend that what I'm using is a solid white fabric. I would set that down and hoop it. And then what I would do is take three pieces of fabric that are complementary fabrics that I like and place them right side up on top of this bear and I'll need to placement line so I'll select my shape and then what I'll do is I'll go to shapes and I'll choose create offset I'm in millimeters so I want to make this spacing 0.1 millimeter and I want it to be outward then I want to change the color of it in the stitch type so I'll change it to a running stitch and let's change it to a green and then I will leave it like that now we want to move that line so that's first in the sewing order so here's what's going to happen and if we will stitch the placement line on our background fabric and in that case I told you that my background fabric is going to be white I would stop and, and my machine would stop before the second color so let me back up a few stitches here so that we can get back to the end now what I do is I take three layers of fabric they're right side up and I place them over the shape of the bear and now what I do is I go on and start my machine up again and it's creating the channels but as it's creating the channels the one thing that our software is doing that's not ideal is it's sewing the outline of the shape it, when you go into a background field you can turn off some of the outline stitches if you want but you cannot turn them off when it's filling the shape in a decorative fill so I will have to remove those stitches so that I can take my tool and run it through this channel to cut the fabric, those three layers of fabric. I do not want to cut my background. That's very important. And you're doing all this while it's still in the hoop. So first I would sew out all my channels. So we'll finish sewing color two and we'll advance it to get to that point. And 
at this point I stop and let me move it back to here what I'll do is I'll stop remove it from my hoop I will take my scissors and I'll trim as close to the line cutting those three layers of fabric that I'm using for my chenille and I'll cut them away but I don't want it to cut inside the line because I, I want that stitch to hold them down momentarily and I definitely don't want to cut the stitches on my channel then I'll take my seam ripper and I'll remove some of the stitches along through here and it, this would be very quick to do that. You just want to make sure that you don't remove any of these stitches that are sewing for your channel stitches. And if you notice, when, when it's sewing those, let's watch it again for a moment. It's stitching it, going up, and then it's coming back down. So that is stitched down twice, which is good. You want it to be stitched down twice. Okay, so you trimmed all of your fabric and around it you relieve the stitches and you also have cut before you get to your third color you have taken your tool and you cut through those channels and everything remains in the hoop it's real important don't unhoop your fabric because now you're going to sew your last stitch and final stitch which is going to be your zigzag stitch to close this up. And you don't want to fluff up your fabric and make it chenille until this is, has stitched out. You could uh, stop it after the point that it has sewn the uh, lines for your underlay. And by the way, I would make my zigzag wider. I would make this more like 3.5. You could before this and fluff it up, but I probably would do it afterwards. And now you'll let it go on and stitch out the zigzag, and you've made a, a chenille design. And like I said, the nice thing about creating this chenille like stitch, which is less than perfect, I'll be the first to admit it, is I can take any shape. And I can, that is built into the software. I can draw that shape and apply this fill. And more importantly, what I can do is I can change the angle of the stitches, which is really nice because it's already digitizing it according to the shape. And if you'll notice when I resize it to fit my tool, I'm not maintaining my aspect ratio because it's not necessarily necessary, excuse me, I don't have a cross hatch. I simply have a straight line that's running vertically. Or it can, in this case, it can also run in several directions. It really doesn't matter. So I could run it horizontally if I wanted, except I can't get it there. Make that 270 and then it will be. So I can run it horizontally if I want. And by the way, there are several tools that are out there. Ulfa, I believe, makes one that has four different cutters all in one, and it's on like a rotary blade. I'm thinking about purchasing that one. And Clover makes one as well. That's what I have. This would be really neat to do if you had some flannel. Um, and if you think about it, you could do this for a little baby blanket. You could use several of the little shapes that you have and create something fairly quickly. I hope that this has been helpful to you. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe to them and share them with a friend. And if you have any questions, let me know. If you know of a faster way of accomplishing this, share it with us. This is the way that we learn. Thanks and have a great day.